Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sins of Tempo County Corso. So I'm here with the puppies. Um, this is going to be our goodbye video for our brindle boy here. He's going home today um, or, t or early tomorrow morning. He, as you can see, is sharing his food. He's doing very well. Um, I have not seen any of that behavior that I was seeing before. So him hanging out with his siblings has done a lot. Everybody's tails are um, respectfully placed. There comes big boy. See how he lifted his head up? So that black, that black male is kind of trying to step in a little bit. The Formentino is like, hey, back off. He's like, whatever, I'll wait. But as you see, the Brindle boy really didn't get involved. It wasn't him. Even the Formentino female, um, her tail is not extremely high either. Now he's the only one eating. You see his brother comes over. His tail stays low. He didn't growl. He didn't feel the need to take possession. So he really just needed to be held back a little bit longer. And, and truth be told, that can happen. So, the, so his brothers just come in. Getting some water. So it's almost like his brother was asking for permission to come in. And then he kept getting kind of a no, which is which is the brindle puppy not moving and also taking up the majority of the access to the food because he was really blocking it with his body. And then the second time, his brother gave way. Look at that structure. Good looking boy right there. He's going to be very nice. What's up? What's up, boy? What's up? What's up, girl? So they're all looking really good. They're all behaving themselves. I had them out running around a little bit while I was cleaning up. And um, whenever I clean up in here, I've got to get them out because I've got to scrub it, use cleaner, and um, just work hard to get it up. I may end up moving them into um, a larger enclosure once this brindle boy goes home because this really is set up more for younger puppies and so um, probably what I'll do. This guy is gorgeous man. He is fantastic. This, whew, I'm so I'm so happy I get to I, I get to have him. I still haven't figured out a name for him. Just just not there yet. Look how smart that Brindle boy is trying to figure out a way out. Look at him looking around. Seeing that and that's one of the reasons why he's gonna be a handful. Because he's very intelligent, but he is also dominant. And so, um, whoever gets him, which he's already been got, but just, you know, for the woman who has him, which she's seen video of him. She knows his story, so I, th I think that she wouldn't take him on if she didn't feel that she could handle him. So, big boy. But, um, the reality is that a dog like this really is not a problem for somebody who can understand what the dog is and, um, and not personalize it, you know, um, because 
a lot of people want to take it personal when their dog tries to dominate them or when their dog growls at them or when their dog um, doesn't listen or whatever. They, they take it as a personal insult when the reality of the situation is that you clearly have um, a misunderstanding between the two of you as to who is the boss. And either that or um, you have not done an adequate job of teaching your dog um, what you mean when you ask them to do something. But as long as the dog knows exactly what you're asking them to do and they're not doing it or they are sassing you like you go to take something from them and they growl at you or snap at you or um, you get up off the couch and they immediately take your spot and then they don't want to get up and um, things like that. They're When they're encroaching on you in your space and when they're dominating you and being disrespectful, that's not an issue of the dog not understanding a command. That's an issue of a dog um, not having a good um, understanding of their place in your home. And the reality is that if you don't communicate well um, the dog's position, meaning your position, then th then then the dog is going to see it as being, um, you know, and as far as the leader position to be open for the taking. And so if you're not clear in who you are and your role in your home, then the dog will just assume that that, that, that position is for the taking. And, and they will, um, depending upon the dog, may or may not assume that role. Oh, there's a bumblebee over there. Hopefully it doesn't mess with the puppies. Oh. And so, um, so anyway, so with this guy, you know, like it, my recommendations for dealing with a puppy like this, um, a very dominant puppy like this is a, if you're, um, if you're buying from a breed that is known for being very dominant and your breeder will allow that dog to stay longer and, um, spend some time with its mother or with its litter mates, I would highly recommend that because there's a lot that can be taught from other dogs that um, is easier for them to learn from each other than from you. But if that's not possible, then there are things that you can do. And, um, and so that really involves um, not allowing the puppy to bite on you, not allowing the puppy to, um, to, you know, kind of bully your space, like take your space from you, growl at you, take things. Um, and there are ways that you assert yourself. Um, and one of those is with your energy. You know, a lot of people don't realize the importance of, of your energy. And, um, you know, you can, you can, you can communicate your displeasure um, in a way that a dog will absolutely understand and then if you withhold um, your affection except for when the dog is doing what you want them to do um, it can be a very clear indicator for the dog you know I'm not happy and, and I am displeased and I will not um, be affectionate or rewarding to you when you are not doing the things you need to do and I will be rewarding to you when you do the things that you need to do um, and like say for example um, a puppy is um, chewing on something they're not supposed to be, for me, I will immediately come up very assertively. I'm not going to ask for it. I'm going to come up and I'm going to take it um, in a very assertive way. And I'm going to tell them no um, very clearly in a very um, uh, firm way. And then I will give them something that they can chew on, like a toy that is theirs, so that... Um, so that it's not just a discipline, it's also a redirect. And, um, and you just have to be very firm with these puppies. You have to be very clear and, it, and you really have to understand that when you own a dog like this, um, not all of them are gonna be like this, but some of them are. And when you have one like this, you have to understand that it's about them. It's not about you, it's about them. So you have to give them what they need, no matter what you want out of that relationship and that's not easy for a lot of people because a lot of people get a puppy for a certain experience they want to cuddle and they want to have cute moments and the reality is is that you might have a serious dog like this one who can't be coddled like that because he'll take it as submission 
and he'll use that as an opportunity to dominate you. And so um, a lot of people can't handle dogs like this. M many people have never even seen dogs like this, never even been around dogs like this. And a lot of trainers um, would never have the tools to work with a dog like this because a lot of them refuse to acknowledge the true nature of dogs. And they also um, refuse to do anything that is, um, that is, would be considered not positive reinforcement. And so look at him, look at him. Yep, look at him. He knows exactly where the thing is to open the door. Look how smart that dog is. And so the thing about it is, is that a dog like this would just play people like that like a fiddle. And um, and so you really have to be on your P's and Q's for a dog like this. And um, not be intimidated. Understand and respect the dog. Um, but also provide the structure and the discipline and the boundaries to be able to raise this dog properly. And if so, he'll be a fantastic dog um, and an absolutely loyal protector that would stare down any threat at any time, which is why he's so fearless and tough. But you can't be a softie. You know, if, if you're the kind of person that feels bad when you have to discipline your dog, then you can't have a dog like this um, because this dog will just will just run all over you. They will literally use that against you. You, you can't um, treat train these dogs for more than just basic understanding. So uh, what I mean by that is you can use a treat to teach them the concept of the behavior. So when you're trying to teach a dog to sit or a puppy to sit, you can use a treat to do that. But eventually you need to wean that puppy off and not use a treat. The puppy needs to do it because you asked him to, not because there's a reward. And some dogs you can do that with, you can reward all the time and they're very happy and, and good dogs. And I don't mean like good as in like that this guy's a bad dog, but I mean, they're very easy keepers and it's not a problem. But when you have a dog like this, you need to know that you have control. You need to know that this dog is going to listen because you said so and not because he's getting something out of it. And so he's a dog that is going to need to be weaned off and does need to listen and is going to need very strong obedience and respect for his owner um, so that he doesn't make mistakes because ultimately a puppy like this is going to be the kind that is going to be very protective and so a firm owner is going to be able to teach this puppy this is an okay situation to bark at and this is a not okay situation to bark at and if he doesn't respect his owner as a leader he's not going to listen when that when that owner says hey this isn't a threat so um, that relationship is crucial for this breed and it, it cannot be understated enough and um, not all of them are like that but some of them are and he's this this boy is one of them he's just like his father his father was exactly the same way very tough dog didn't get to have any of that cuddly puppy time with him he wasn't much of a um, wasn't much for playing unless you were gonna throw a ball and um, really wasn't much of a of a lover but once he matured and once I gave him proper guidance and discipline he matured into a loving dog into a playful dog and that's the beauty is that these dogs do become what you want later, um, but you have to put in the work first. And the positive thing is that they're oftentimes just really super fantastic dogs. They're, they are um, the most intelligent. They are the most courageous. And so you really get what you put into it, um, if that makes sense. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you've enjoyed watching this boy's progress from um, going into a home that really wasn't necessarily um, suited for a, a, a male as dominant as him and coming back and finding a better home that is suited for him. Not to say that his original home wasn't a good home, just wasn't a good home for him. Um, those buyers will be getting um, a female and so, uh, you know, no issues there. But just a, a really good lesson for potential buyers that everybody has to be on board it, it you know for husbands out there who think that they're going to get a corso and everybody's just going to get along it doesn't work that way the mother has to be um the wife has to be on board the children have to be on board it's it's truly a, a family affair so uh so anyway so a good breeder will always take the dog back will always um work to find that 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 dog um, the best home and um, will always be there to guide and take in and care for their puppies 
and their adult dogs to ensure that they never ever go to a shelter you know it's it's in our contract that you can never let our dogs go to the shelter if you cannot take care of your dog for one reason or another you have to give us the dog back and it's not because we're greedy and we want to sell it and make money again it's because if we don't know where that dog is living and who it's living with then we cannot guarantee that that dog will not be put in a shelter eventually so we have to be the ones that are um, managing that puppy's future because they are our responsibility and that's the only way that we can manage that responsibility and so um, it's it's responsible um, breeding practices 101 so anyway hope you guys are having a good day and i'll talk at you later bye bye puppy